Welcome Stormwater Designers. Thank you for watching this video. Today we've got a, an exciting video ahead of us. What is a bioretention facility? So, if, so we're going to do a bioretention facility introduction here. It's one of the key elements in our WWHM 2012 software package and the upcoming software package WimSwim. And it's sort of a cutting edge element, something that Clear Creek Solutions started modeling uh, using our our algorithms and our software packages way before anyone else and it's really being used a lot especially in western washington so we're just going to go over uh, what it is what its function is and then we're going to have a free gift at the end that gift is the six steps to modeling bioretention facilities guide so if you go to the description you can get that guide uh, for free and it should help you with your designs immediately so check that guide out but first um, just a few things about Clear Creek Solutions. You can uh, head over to our web website, clearcreeksolutions.info, and uh, you can see us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. We're posting more and more hydrology tips and tricks, as well as uh, free guides and promotions there. So go check us out on uh, those mediums. So what is a bioretention facility? A bioretention facility is an engineered facility designed to store and treat water through various soil layers. So essentially, and I'm gonna show some diagrams later, but essentially, uh, this is an engineered facility, but using you know natural elements. So it's going to use different soil layers with different different uh, amounts of infiltration rates, and basically it allows us to naturally filter this water and store it. So instead of using maybe a vault or pipes, or you know even a detention facility where you do have to dig up you know a lot of soil for these, these are more naturally uh, not necessarily naturally occurring, but these are you know using natural elements. To help uh, filter our water and store it so this water is treated or infiltrated so infiltration is an option too with the bioretention facility um, with excess water continuing continuing to an adjacent drainage system so you don't have to infiltrate all the water but it can be used to infiltrate because it is likely that that water will be treated through these different soil layers and the constant maintenance of these bioretention facilities uh, is required to ensure proper treatment and filtration so uh, one of the factors when going into designing these bioretention facilities is they do have to be maintenance. We have to make sure the soil layers are still intact, uh, that they're still uh, filtering the water properly, and infiltration is still occurring at the at the rate we want to. But if we can, um, you know, accomplish these things, these are really really useful facilities that can kind of naturally, you know, treat stormwater and mitigate our flow. So bioretention facilities have many names and may be referred to in different ways. So depending on your jurisdiction you're in, a bioretention facility may have a very different name. So here's just some of them. They go by many names. Bioretention, rain garden, biofiltration, bioswale is another one that's used, and stormwater planter box. And uh, Western Washington, these are some of the names that are used. But in some jurisdictions, these mean different things. And in other jurisdictions, the terms are used interchangeably. So make sure you know what it is referred to in your jurisdiction uh, that would that would be the key uh, for you know for our, our our videos and what we do at Clear Creek Solutions I'll just refer to it as a bioretention facility or bioretention uh, here's a quick picture of what one looks like you can see there's there's some water pooled up right now um, it's going to filter through, through the soil layers and either it'll uh, you know go to a further um, you know stormwater facility or it'll infiltrate it through the ground what is also another important piece about bioretention facilities is uh, evapotranspiration. So in Washington state, these engineered facilities, uh, they treat stormwater by passing it through a specified soil profile and either retain or detain the treated stormwater for flow attenuation. And then of course we refer to uh, the specific manuals that we use. Now a rain garden is a little different. It's a non-engineered shallow landscape depression with compost amended native soils or imported soils and adapted plants. So rain garden is not quite as um, you know intensely designed as a bioretention is. It's gonna use those natural elements. And then of course we reference the, the different handbooks that we use, even the Western Washington uh, Homeowners a Guide from 2007 for different specifications on that. So in terms of bioretention, it's an engineered facility. So it is designed, everything about it is designed the area the depth, the different soil layers, and what we're using to, uh, you know, treat that stormwater, filter it. So if it's coming from, you know, let's say it's coming, it's runoff from a roadway that had asphalt, right? And has all these chemicals, all these toxins in it. Well, we can actually use natural soil layers as it passes through these soil layers um, to clean this water and then infiltrate that back into the ground or send it further 
uh, you know, into an, to another stormwater facility. So your local agency standards will play a big role in how these are supposed to be modeled, um, you know, where you can use them, where you can't use them, can you infiltrate, and also your, your project constraints. So as I said, know what is required of you in your jurisdiction. What we do here in Western Washington may be completely different from where you're at. So uh, some more explanation of how bioretention works. Uh, bioretention works by retaining water on site, which then allows the water to infiltrate, as I said before, into the bioretention engineered soil mix or evaporate and transpire into the atmosphere. So as you saw in that picture uh, a couple slides back, you had some water sitting there. Some of that water is going to evapotranspire into the atmosphere or it's going to continue to infiltrate through our specified engineered soil mix. So in WWH in 2012, you can specify what soil is used, the infiltration rate, how thick those layer are, layers are, and then and then that model will estimate how much that water we can uh, you know filtrate so that's safe to infiltrate into the ground, which is a uh, you know very key. So uh, bioretention uses long-term on-site infiltration and evapotranspiration to reduce stormwater runoff. So what is happening in between these stormwater events is kind of where the magic happens in a bio uh, re retention facility. Because over a long period of time, it's either going to treat that water or allow it to, you know, evapotranspirate into the atmosphere. It's not really a directly, you know, short-term fix for a, a large storm event, although it can mitigate flow. That's not really its main purpose. Its main purpose is to sort of treat that water over a long period of time, either through the infiltration or, as I said, uh, the evapotranspiration. So the bioretention can provide really good use of water quality and hydro modification if it is designed correctly. And that is the key. Um, you know, making sure that these bioretention facilities are designed correctly is very important. And as I talked about in a uh, previous video, the study just came out that the WWH in 2012 bioretention facility does a great job of modeling uh, real world scenarios. But the caveat to that is if it was designed correctly, if it was designed correctly and if it was built in the field correctly, if the specs were not used correctly or the engineers did not design them properly, then they didn't work as intended. But if we can design these properly in a software package such as uh, WimSwim or WWHM 2012, these do work. They do a great job at cleaning, filtering the water and also providing flow mitigation. So. Uh, the fire retention facilities cannot be designed correctly if they're not modeled correctly. So it has to be modeled in a continuous simulation model like WimSwim, you know, using someone who's experienced in hydrology, and uh, that's how we're going to get the best results. And we understand that modeling bioretention facilities, there's a lot to this. Just as I explained in this short video, there's a lot to modeling these facilities. So that's why we have a free guide for you. Uh, we have a free gift. Download the six steps to modeling bioretention facilities today. Go to the description box. Get that guide and that'll help you that'll walk you through a sample project sort of explain some of these terms and how you do it in a software package uh, like wwhm 2012 so that'll help you get started right away in modeling your bioretention facilities so i want to thank you guys so much for watching this video uh, check us out on those other mediums and we'll see you guys next time <laughs>